Hello? Those machinations were almost mild compared with the other plots over which Burke and other agents now poured. Albert planned to gain a monopoly on the supply of liquid chlorine used for poison gas, purchase an American airplane company and its precious patents, organize a protectionist labor movement to choke off the supply of cotton imported from Britain, and work with America's anti-war politicians and labor leaders to force an embargo on all munitions shipments to Britain and France. In perhaps the most shocking discovery from the briefcase, the Secret Service learned of the doctor's scheme for a German invasion of America. Albert and his co-conspirators in American and Berlin had crafted a plan in which the German Navy would land 85,000 battle-hardened troops along the New Jersey coast and seal New York City off until it surrendered because of starvation. The combination of Albert's carelessness and Agent Burke's quick thinking had yielded an intelligence bonanza. As the agency and the police swooped down on Albert and his cohorts and imprisoned them, newspapers nationwide lauded the Secret Service's counter-espionage coup, a success in which both luck and dogged detective work had figured. Even as Burke and other operatives ferreted out the Kaiser's spies and agents, the Secret Service continued to chase and arrest counterfeiters, and forgers. As always in wartime, counterfeiters stepped up production of bogus greenbacks and coins, which were rendered with dyes and molds of various quality. In 1917 alone, agents chalked up 1,038 counterfeiting convictions and seized $283,706 in phony bills and coins. They also investigated the counterfeiting of internal revenue stamps for liquor and pursued investigations of federal pension fraud. Let me repeat that. They also investigated the counterfeiting of internal revenue stamps used for liquor and pursued investigations of federal pension fraud. As many historians of counterfeiting have noted, governments of nations at war have to devote so many law enforcement resources to domestic defense that counterfeiters feel there are fewer police and agents watching them. At least early in a conflict, passing bogus money has proven historically easier than in times of peace. How many busts have you made for counterfeiting or illegal coinage since 19, I'm sorry, 19, uh, 17, I'm sorry, 100 years after 1917. See, if you issued liberty bonds based upon somebody else's expectation that you were going to help them with a war effort and or even reconstruction after a war, what do you think they're expecting is the yield? I don't think they're expecting biological warfare. And the only way you can accomplish Successfully financing biological warfare is if you default on what you actually owed as part of the bond. How many busts for counterfeiting has the United States accomplished? I've heard of one. One involving one preacher. One. In the last five years. How many busts for illegal coinage? You have the Federal Reserve discussing non-legal tender, convertible virtual currency. That is not appropriate. Your ideation of the Secret Service is about what? Covering up for presidential, sexual infidelities, philandering, and crimes? You murdered my grandfather. My understanding is my grandfather's war bond was about busting counterfeiters. That includes counterfeiters that misrepresent that somebody had <clears throat> a medical condition. So you can create bogus derivative agreements and try to use that as a substitute for actually engaging in official duties as members of public office. How many... Fake driver's licenses. Did you hook up on teenagers in the state of Texas alone and allow for charlatans masquerading that they were involved with intelligence to use for their fraudulent counterfeit currency operations?
These are very real questions. And unfortunately, they've come due. More than due. We are more than four years past due on very substantial obligations. I am not going to let you get away with this.